Welcome to our talk today, uh, Why Choose Positive Thinking? Um, positive thinking has so many good effects, right? Like one of the first one is it makes you feel happier, right? When you're positive thinking, you feel happier. Another one is it reduces stress, anxiety, and depression. And the third one is it boosts your immune system. I'm sure positive thinking does a lot more than that, but there, there are three quick summaries that, that I found over and over that that positive thinking has a has an effect on uh, people who posit, who think in a positive way just tend to be happier, right? They tend to be happier people, and um, which is important, right? Because if you're so unhappy and so miserable, you might not even want to be around yourself, right? And if you don't want to be around yourself, then you can't really give out about and and complain about other people not wanting to be around you. It's one of, it's one of the big things I see when it comes to like healing and relationships, people talk about, oh, I'm finding it really hard to be in a relationship. It's like, well, if you don't want to be with you, why on earth would someone else want to be with you, right? So we need to kind of sort out that, that, negative, <laughs> that negative stuff because sometimes people don't realize their own kind of negativity because they get caught in patterns and, and stuff. And then when it comes to reducing like stress, anxiety, depression, in terms of positive thinking that there, there's, there's literally a vibrational frequency that comes out from positive thinking. I've been teaching courses on it for years under, under the name like law of attraction, meaning that you attract what you vibrate. And when we're in that low vibrational state, we're attracting more stress, more anxiety, and we start looping in, like when we have negative thoughts, they cluster, we get more negative thoughts and we can cluster into this like self-defeating, almost depressive state. And like, if you think negatively long enough, it'll make you depressed, you know, no need for a chemical imbalance here. Just simply thinking negative over time will, will lead you like you're every time you think you're releasing hundreds of thousands of chemical reactions in your brain so you become you become what you think about all day long right so you're actually become your physical body is becoming the chemical reflection of your thought process you know so these are some of the things we're going to jump into tonight as well as um why why um positive thinking boosts your immune system and that's that's really an, an interesting one. In fact, why don't we start there? Why don't we start with the positive thinking boost your immune system? And the reason I say that is because there, there's been studies done into, um, into the immune system. And what they found was that when people are angry, so just a few moments of being ang angry can shut down your immune system by up to five hours. Boom, right, right there, <laughs> you know, being angry, getting into like a, a really that road rage for, for five minutes can shut your immune system down by up to five hours. Um, pretty, pretty crazy, right? But on the other side of that, they've done studies where they've taken viruses, injected it into people, and the people that were happy where the virus didn't take any effect in their body. They couldn't literally inject the flu virus into people who were happy. They couldn't inject it in, like literally it had no effect on them. And for the reason that their immune system was strong. And I think especially in the last couple of years, and um, with all the craziness going around in the world, it's like literally people have forgotten that they have an immune system, right? Like it's, they've literally forgotten that they have an immune system. And there's been very little, like very little focus on our ability and capacity to be healthy, to be well, whether it's eating well, whether it's exercising, whether it's positive thinking, whether it's having energy healing sessions, you know, there's very little exposure of like things that we can do for our own positive health, mental health, emotional health. And it's like sickness is coming from outside of you and you need uh, you need treatment from something outside of you. And I'm going to say that nothing could be further from the truth, that you have this 
phenomenal capacity and power inside of you to heal yourself and for your body to heal. And it all begins with like, there's, there's three things that we say in bioenergy. So the, in the bioenergy healing process, we say that there's, there's three pillars to the bioenergy healing system. And the, the first pillar of bioenergy is intention. And, and why that is, is that the power of your intention organizes so your mind organizes the body. And so when, pe when people are disorganized in their mind, their body tends to be disorganized too. So one of the first things in healing, whether it's bioenergy healing or perhaps in other forms of healing too, but, but definitely in bioenergy healing, the very first principle is get the mind under control insofar as get organizing the mind, start directing the mind. Because when, the, when, when you start directing and get in charge of your mind, your body follows, right? So as the mind becomes better organized, the body starts to respond to that organization, right? Like you, you, wouldn't, have, you wouldn't have like a, a bus system where there's no routes organized or plans. People just jump on buses and we see where they end up, right? It'd be absolute chaos, right? So we organize like every everything has a system, right? A system in place. But in the same way, like you've got the most powerful computer in the world inside of you. And it makes sense that you need to be in charge of it. You need to be in the driving seat, right? It's it's like um, you wouldn't let a bulldozer go driving down the road without somebody driving it, right? Like the chaos, right? And yet we let that happen with our minds every single day. Every single day you let your mind do whatever it wants. And we're often not, you know, there, people haven't been given a manual of how the mind works. They haven't been given a manual of how to manage and direct their thoughts. They haven't been given a manual of how their thoughts affect their they're not just our immune system, but every area of your life. And so the very first pillar in bioenergy healing is get your thoughts and your mind under control. And we do that through intention. What's your intention and being aware of what your intention is as you're coming into a healing treatment. What is the intention of the practitioner? What is the intention of the person, the client who's receiving healing? And, and that's just the first, that's just organizing that mental energy. The second pillar of bioenergy is breathing. And breathing is so important because breathing brings us into the present moment. And the present moment, folks, that's the place to be, right? The present moment, right? What's, what's the secret to happiness? Being in the present moment, right? The, what's the secret to health and well-being? Being in the present moment. But the process of positive thinking is one of the ways that we can direct and organize the mind to bring us more into the present moment. Because if we're not organizing the mind, it's going to keep pulling us out of the present moment. But when, we're, when we've got our mind organized, it doesn't go into conflict with us when we're in the present moment. All right? So something to think about there, right? And then the third pillar of bioenergy, of course, is the bioenergy um, techniques, the bioenergy treatment. So we're, we're doing bioenergy sessions as a way of opening up the energy, getting the energy flowing, releasing blocks, blocks out of the body. And we work on the seven main chapters of the body as a way of treating different illness and sicknesses in the, within the body, mind and spirit. Um, process and one of the one of the chakras we work on for if we if we were to say if we were working really for positive thinking the main chakra we'd be working on always is the brow chakra you know it, it's one of the one of the areas that in energy healing you've got you you've got to work on the brow chakra in every session but why do you got to work in the brow chakra? Because if their if their mind is in the way of their healing, if their thoughts process, if like a person doesn't have to believe in something for it to have an effect, but if a person 
if the person's mind has the power to prevent them from receiving though and that's that's the key there that we can actually if the mind is closed we won't allow ourselves to receive if the mind is closed we'll block ourselves off from that process of receiving so one of the reasons why like in bioenergy we do a lot of work on clearing the brow chakra is simply to keep opening the mind to receiving you know so tonight we'll just unravel a little bit of positive thinking how that how we look at that within the bioenergy system and uh, the process of and the benefits of that and i think we'll even include um aging in that how does that sound so we'll take a look at the effects of positive thinking and aging actually why don't we jump there right now because you know you might be thinking well how what does positive thinking have to do with aging well in essence there's um one of the people I like have followed for since I first got into bioenergy over 30 years ago and I've done his workshops, read his books and all this, all the different processes I could do with him was the wonderful Deepak Chopra. And I, one of the things I've loved about Deepak Chopra is I think one of the first programs I did was Magical Mind, Magical Body. And as it sounds, Magical Mind, Magical Body, it really really opens you up to how magical your mind is how magical your body is and as i started stripping away that process um i learned a lot about the body's regeneration how the body heals itself and i was really interested in in the 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 quantum mechanical side of how the body regenerates and i realized a lot of people really don't have any idea how easily and quickly your body is regenerating to the point like that your body is regenerating every year every year your body is renewing itself now there's a, the old philosophy is the body regenerates every seven years but radioactive isotope studies have proved like almost it must be 50 years 50 years ago radioactive isotope studies showed that there's no um, cells in your body that was there last year. And 90, 98% of the atoms in your body weren't there last year. And so that I find that like, that's really interesting, right? So now we come to like, well, what, what does that have to do with aging? Well, Deepak Chopra said that there's, there's three kind of ways to, to measure aging. And one of them is your your chronological age. So most of us know our chronological age is what's on your passport, what's in your driving license, you know, how many years you've been on the planet. That's your chronological age. And you can't really fake that one, right? Like when you open up your driving license, your passport, you know, you can, you can tell people you're a different age, but your chronological age is like, that's that's your, your ID, right? Your, your proof of your age. And yet, what's really strange is, even though he says you have a chronological age, some people look or feel 15 years younger than their chronological age. And on average, some people can look and feel 15 years older than their chronological age. Now, you might look your chronological age in fact like most people generally look somewhere within their chronological age right but not everybody feels their chronological age so the chronological age like we literally the body can literally feel and and change by up to 15 years in either direction just on average for for average people we can go we can be 15 years older or 15 years younger than our chronological age at least we can we can feel that we are and so these other two ages the first one is our chronological age like i said that doesn't change right so your chrono chronological age is set every year on you're on the planet you can add a year to it right now the other two ages then is your biological age so your biological age is when they do testing on your body and they they do all the tests on your body and they say your body is this age. And generally, 
you know, with some people, their chronological age and your biological age, you expect it to be roughly the same. And it'll, it'll vary a little bit, but, you know, generally you'd expect it to be the same. With that said, there, it can go backwards or forwards up to 15 years. So sometimes people's biological age can be 15 or more years higher or lower than your chronological age. And that is really crazy. And now we get into the third age. And the third age for aging is your mental age. And that's where the power of positive thinking, I think, comes into this. Because your mental age, would you believe, your mental age has more to do with your biological age than your chronological age does. And you know the way some people say, oh, that person is like, you know, they're, you, you can have like, you can have a young 80 year old. Like you can literally have a young 80 year old and you can have an old 60 year old. Isn't that true? Like literally, you know, the, the 80 year old could be like, it's better to burn out than to fade away, <laughs> you know? She's going kicking and screaming through the doors of hell, <laughs> you know, but it's it's like, um, you know, there's a, you have some people that like, they seem to be very active and participating in their life and really enjoying life. And then you have other people that are just like, they're worn out. They look haggard. They look done. <laughs> right. And it really doesn't matter what age the person is. Like it's, the, the, your chronological age, like I said, you can't change your chronological age. That's just the age that you are. But your biological age, you can get older or younger based on your mental age. And so then how do we extract that mental age? Well, I think so much of it has to do with a person's attitude. Literally, their, their attitude. Well, what's your mental age? Well, if, if you keep perceiving things as like stress and a struggle and you know you're anxious about stuff and life is hard and life is difficult and you're complaining about stuff you know one of the things I, I found like as a practitioner working with people for over 30 years is you're always like every time someone comes for a session you're literally confronted with their attitude right their attitude what's their attitude as they come in for a session, their attitude towards me, someone who they've maybe never met before, their attitude towards their family and friends, their attitude towards their work, their attitude towards their relationship, their children, their attitude towards their health or their sickness. And you see like some people's attitude towards their sickness, they're very much a victim to it. They're very much defeated. And then other people, you know, it, sometimes it's so inspiring. You'll meet someone who's ill and their attitude is so uplifting and inspiring. You know, you meet some people who had crazy challenges in their life. Their life is so difficult and their attitude is unbelievable. Their attitude is so positive. And then you meet other people and their life doesn't seem to be that hard, but their attitude sucks. <laughs> their attitude is like a spoiled child. Their attitude is like a, just a pure victim, you know? And so there, it ranges from everything in between. And, you know, as, as someone who's helped people turn their health around, it's like, I, I always think like the first place to start is always in the mind, right? Organize the mind and the body will follow, you know? Now, of course, like in, in terms of energy healing, you're, you you still have to release the blockages causing the illness and sickness. You still have to release trauma from the body. So there's still like work to be done. But tonight, like in our talk, why choose positive thinking? I think like just breaking down this one component of our health, obviously our health is, is composed of multiple things. And even the subject of, of um, sorry, I'm just adding some people here. Even the subject of positive thinking is such a huge subject. But I think if we can just break down, break it down even a little bit tonight and give you some insight into some of the things that I that I see and that I help people with, I think you can take something away from it 
that will um, not just uplift you, open you and expand you, but create like a create some real benefits to to at least understanding why why you might want to choose positive thinking. Right. No, no one's telling you to. We're, it's just an offer. Right. It's an offer. <laughs> like, I, I, don't, I think like you can you can tell someone to be positive and then they walk out the door and a moment later they're negative. Why? Because they're pattern, right? Like there's patterns that we have and habits that we have. And if you if you're if you're in a habit of just being like the negative, negative Nelly, I call it, if you're in the habit of being a negative Nelly, it doesn't matter if, if someone says to you be positive, you know, a moment later, you're going to go back to your habit just because that's what's comfortable. That's what you know. That's what's familiar. But I think one of the ways that we can interrupt the, the process is if you can understand why, like when we understand why we might want to be positive, then that interrupts the process. And I'm going to give you some tips tonight on how to do that. Does that sound good? Thank you. Please feel free to nod your head or give a thumbs up just to make sure that you're live or that the screen hasn't frozen and I'm talking to myself or something. Okay, so finishing off the, the one part about the aging before we move on. So in terms of aging, people can sometimes look or feel a lot younger than what they are. And they can also look and feel a lot older than what they are. And, and that makes sense, right? Everybody gets that. And, and everybody knows people who are, who are a lot, they look and feel and they even sound a lot older than what they are. And then you meet other people and it's like they don't age or they, they're very youthful. And it really has nothing to do with their chronological age. It has to do with their mental age, that their biological, their, the biology of their body is more affected by how they think than it is by how many birthdays they have. You get that, right? That you're, that the aging process of the body, whether the body is being stressed, whether the body is aging and wearing out from stress, like if you're, if you're thinking in a critical way all the time, if you're expecting things to go wrong if you're fearful all the time you know you're going to put more stress on your body your body is going to be under more of a like if we break it down to the the science and the nervous system of it you're literally going to be more in a, a sympathetic state than a parasympathetic state and in an ideal reality we oscillate between both so on the in breath when we breathe we're in a more sympathetic state. On the out breath, when we breathe out, we're in a parasympathetic state. So they balance each other out, right? But in terms of when we're stressed, and that stress, when we're thinking in negative ways and we put that extra stress on ourselves, we're activating more of a sympathetic nervous system. We're making the body more acidic than alkaline. And something a lot of people don't know that your breathing can make your body more acidic or more alkaline because often you think of it as food right you eat more alkaline foods to make your body more alkaline right and you reduce acidic foods but you're also doing it with your breathing you, when you're breathing in a more stressful way it it affects your body in a more in a more um in a more sympathetic way. And so what it does is it creates more inflammation in your body, more acidity, more inflammation. So this, like, that's why meditation is so good. There, there's studies upon studies of the benefits of meditation, like, like of how slowing your breathing down, quieting your mind, emptying your mind. Like often people say, you know, Michael, I can't meditate. My mind's too busy. You know, whenever I try to meditate, my mind's really busy. Meditation isn't making your mind busy. The beauty of meditation is what it's doing is it's showing you how fucking busy your mind is. 
it's showing you how busy your mind is like that all the time. It's just you don't notice it. Why don't you notice it? Because you don't take the time to meditate. When you take the time to meditate and you realize my mind is really busy, it's not that you can't meditate because your mind is busy. It's meditation is showing you that your mind is busy, right? Meditation is just simply not being attached to how busy your mind is. That's, that's what meditation is, learning to detach from how busy your mind is. It's not about stopping thinking. People are like, oh, I want to meditate to stop thinking. How is that going for you, right? Meditation doesn't stop you thinking. I don't know that anything stops you thinking, right? That's what you're, that's what you're, you've been doing that since you were young. You've been thinking, think, you know, 60,000 thoughts a day. You, you have a habit of thinking, right? I, I don't think you should be putting the energy in to stop thinking, right? Like, I mean, the intellect is a beautiful thing. It, it's not about to stop it. It's about harmonizing it. It's about utilizing it, you know? So we're using it in harmony. We're organizing it. We're organizing this wonderful, beautiful, magical mind. We're not trying to stop it from working because of all the all the negative thinking. It's, it's simply about directing the mind, harmonizing the mind. And in the, even in those moments of like when people actually take the time to meditate, when people are doing yoga, tai chi, qigong, energy healing, in those moments, you, you might actually find that your mind becomes so detached from the thinking that it will actually feel like you're not thinking at all. In the moments of breathing, you'll become so connected to your physical body that it'll feel like your mind is completely empty. And it's, it's not an emptiness of nothing, but like a fullness of non-physical, non-material intelligence. It's like having access to just your, a uh, beautiful way of saying it is your, your inner wisdom, like having access to your wisdom. See, sometimes there's so much noise in the mind that we can't listen to the wisdom that's inside of us, you know? And it's, it's like those good feelings that we get. When we get that good feeling, that's, that's our body. Like, you know, talk about positive thinking, that your gut, the cells of your body is able to give you accurate feedback about what's happening in the world. Because we, we kind of like shape things like based on our conditioning and programming, we might alter how we perceive things. But your gut doesn't do that. Your gut gives you an accurate interpretation of what's happening in the world. Because your gut has receptors on the cells. So your gut actually thinks just like your brain does. So when people think of your thinking, thinking doesn't just happen in your brain. It also happens in your gut you know that's why they call it the abdominal brain because even your gut is thinking the difference is your gut is thinking without the conditioning and the programming now I, i'm not sure that we call that positive thinking but you can definitely call it intuitive thinking right like it's direct in intuition to your to your inner wisdom so in terms of wrapping up the aging part the beauty of, of aging is forget your age. Forget how old you are if you want to feel younger. Forget how old you are. Stop making associations with it. And, you know, decide, like, in terms of your, you know, how do you feel? So focus more on how you feel rather than how old you are. You know, so sometimes people, like, sometimes people say, how old are you? In order to fit you into a category in which they feel comfortable. You know, I always say to people, I forgot, <laughs> you know, and they're like, oh, no, but seriously, how old are you? Because they want to fit you into a category like you must fit in so that I can feel comfortable, you know, right? You see someone, I, I see so many like amazing people come in for sessions and, you know, they, they're doing like just amazing things with their life and you know, the first thought that comes in, you're too old to be doing that. Like, you know, and it's like people defy that, right? It's like when when there's no thought process of like, oh, I have to act my age, because that's what people say, right? You need to act your age. 
right? But when you're not thinking in that way and you're just like responding to how you feel, your body actually can stay younger. Like, and literally you can like de-age by up to 15 years. Well, why is that significant? Well, I think that's significant in, in a positive thinking way because if you look at as people get older, generally people will, like as people age or get older, they tend to have more illness and more sickness and more ailments. So I'm, I'm not saying that we've got to stay young, but I think like the, the younger we feel, the healthier, the, the healthier we tend to be with that. Does that make sense? You know, so as we, as we're feeling healthy, you know, as we're feeling younger, your body is actually responding to that. You know, there was, there was a really interesting study done too of where they took um, a group of seniors and they put them into this environment for two weeks where they, um, they brought them back, like back to, it was like, um, it was something like 40 years in the past. And they played like the music and they had them dressed up and they had newspapers and they created a whole environment where it was as if the people were like, it was like 40 years back in the past. And what was really crazy was when they were studying the people, people's ailments disappeared, like ailments disappeared, um, all kinds of weird, weird shit started happening. And what it was is because their mind was like after two weeks of that, they were already starting to adjust as if they were 40 years younger and symptoms that they were that they were living with started disappearing. You know, really, really amazing in that way. You know, I mean, that comes into. Um, uh, I kind of wasn't thinking about going into this night, but like in terms of like the placebo effect or the nocebo effect. Placebo, the placebo effect is where a person takes, say, like a sugar pill and they believe it's going to reduce their blood pressure, but they're told it's a blood pressure pill and they take the sugar pill and it actually re relieves or reduces their blood pressure. And that's the power of the mind. So like your own mind, you telling yourself this is a this is um, a will reduce my blood pressure you know, on 30% of the cases, the placebo effect will work on 30% of people. So, you know, there's a lot of times doctors will use the placebo effect. It's, a, it's, a, it's literally a prescribed, placebo is actually a prescribed medicine. Most people don't realize that, but doctors prescribe placebo all the time, right? Because it has a 30% success rate. So, um, but in terms of like, what's the nocebo effect? Well, the same happens in a negative way. Sometimes people get misdiagnosed with an ailment and then all the symptoms of that ailment shows up in their body only to realize that they were misdiagnosed and then immediately, almost instantly, all the symptoms disappear. Isn't that crazy? That's how powerful your mind is. Your mind can make you better and your mind can make you sick. Like, in terms of placebo, your mind can make you healthy. Last week, I think it was last week or the week before, it was recently, <laughs> um, we did a talk on, on spontaneous healing. You know, we kind of touched upon spontaneous remission a little bit. And spontaneous remission is this idea that your body can just heal itself instantly. And that, that, that there's a placebo effect to that where, where doctors can't explain why someone just like heals completely of something, but other than that, they can completely heal of something. And when people have those spontaneous remissions, it's they haven't take, done surgery or they haven't done a medication. Um, it's just like this spontaneous remission where they fully recover. But the, the interesting thing about that is it came from inside of them, right? That plus that, spontaneous emission came from somewhere inside of them you know i i don't think it's a far stretch to say that that place inside of us is our own thinking i don't think that's a far stretch at all i think the power that our that our thinking and our mind has on ourselves from moment to moment is incredible and that i think that the words that we speak have the power to inspire us to uplift us, to open us up, to expand us, 
And the words that we speak also have the power to make us feel ill and sick, to cause arguments, even to cause wars, right? The words that we speak are powerful. Now, where, do, where do those words come from? They also come from our thinking. We think things and then we speak them. Sometimes maybe we should like figure out what we want to say before we speak it, but sometimes we just speak exactly what we're thinking and then we have to make up for it after, right? But lo and behold, we're thinking stuff, we speak stuff, and when we speak, there's a creative process. You say something to someone and it affects them. Isn't that true? You could literally make someone feel happy just by something that you speak, by something that you say. But you can also make someone really angry by something that you say, right? Not any of us here, but you know other people out there. But in terms of like, in terms of when we speak and we're speaking what we're thinking about, we can make other people happy. We can make them angry. We can make them sad. We can make them upset. <laughs> you know, we can influence people with the words that we speak. Well, wouldn't it make sense that we also influence ourselves with how we speak? And when we speak to other people, we tend to use words. We tend to say it out loud. But when we speak to ourselves, we tend not to say it out loud or use words for fear of getting locked up. <laughs> we know. We, well, when we speak to ourselves, it tends to be more in the way of thinking, right? So, you know, because you can hear your own words, you can hear your own thoughts. So you don't have to say it out loud for you to hear it, right? And so when you speak to yourself, you're speaking to yourself just like you would speak to someone else and you make them happy or sad. Would it make sense that when you speak to yourself, you're making yourself happy or sad? Does that make sense? Absolutely, friggin' lutely right? You know? We go back to like the idea of like, more like Newtonian physics and you think of like, well, everything is atoms and physical, you know, and then then we like move advance forward to the quantum mechanics and we say, well, look, everything is energy. Everything is energy. Your thoughts are energy, your words are energy, your body is energy. You take your physical body, physical, solid, tangible body, and you put it under an electron microscope and you find it's just energy. It's empty space. Inside that energy is empty space. Not an emptiness of nothing, but a fullness of non-physical, non-material intelligence. Right. So what's the level of, of our intelligence when it comes to speaking to ourselves, when it comes to us thinking? And how are we thinking? And are we even aware of what we're thinking about? Are we even aware of how we think? Are we aware of how we speak and how we think? And, you know, I always say in bioenergy is that if you spoke to your friends the way you spoke to yourself, you wouldn't have any friends. And if you don't have any friends, you probably should look at that, right? Because if you spoke to your friends the way you speak to yourself, you know, they just wouldn't accept it. But yet people like, when you really do the work and you go in and, you, and you're working with groups of people and you're working with individual sessions and you're working on people, no one is as mean to us as we are to ourselves. Right? Now, we want to give that a name. Let's call it negative thinking. Negative Nelly. <laughs> negative thinking. You don't, you don't need someone else to be negative. You have that all by yourself. You can sit in the room with no one else there and feel like crap. And you can do that to you. You don't need someone. You know, people, people say, Michael, I want to get rid of, I want to get rid of, uh, I want to get rid of, they whisper, people whisper when they say this. Michael, can you tell me how to get rid of negative people? They do, people. You'd be amazed at how, because I teach law of attraction, right? So you'd be amazed at how many people have said to me over the years, Michael, they always whisper when they say, as if the people are listening to them, right? Like, Michael, can you tell me how to get rid of negative people? And I, I whisper back to them, you can't. 
And then they they pause, they're like, why not? And I'm like, because you are one. Right? Law of attraction is that you're you are the vibe, you are the vibrational frequency. You don't change anything outside of you, change what's inside of you, right? You're not changing the external, you're changing the internal. You're doing the work on you, not the work on, you know, everyone else. I mean, come on, folks. Look, if we're to get rid of the negative people in your life, there'd be nobody left. You'd be cutting everyone out of your life, right? You, you can't get rid of everyone, right? You can get rid of some, <laughs> you know, but you can't get rid of everyone. The, the idea is we got to do the work on ourselves. We got to get rid of our own negative thinking, right? So we got to, we got to look at, you know, how are we communicating and speaking to ourselves? And I think we're, I think really where the point of power is, the point of power is always in, like not in what happens, because you, you don't really, like in the grand scheme of things, despite what your ego says to you, you're not really in control of things. Not really, right? You're never, you know, you're never really in control. It's more of an illusion, right? But you can direct. You can direct and you can instruct. You can compel and you can command. You can direct your life and you can, you can definitely take charge of your health. But in terms of like, we don't always get to choose what happens in our lives. We don't, we don't get to choose the circumstances. You know, I don't, I think a lot of people, we didn't choose, you know, a lot of what happened in the last three years, right? A lot of the craziness in the world we might not have chosen the polit political leaders that we have. <laughs> we might not have chosen the systems that are in place that we have, right? So, you know, collectively you could say, oh yeah, this is all part of the system, right? At the same time, we, we don't always choose the things that are happening in our lives, but we're really, where the point of power is, we get to choose our response. Boom. Take that in while I take a sip of water. <laughs> We get to choose our response. Now let's bring that then, let's bring that back to positive thinking. Something happens in your day. Your day, right? Something happens in your day. And how do you respond to it? In a negative thinking way or in a positive thinking way? And that will determine what happens next. It literally determines if you're on a positive timeline or a negative timeline. What's a negative timeline? It's basically a vibrational frequency that you enter into, and then you attract more of the same vibrational frequency. So if you've ever noticed, if you're if you're in a bad mood, how you'll attract lots lots of shitty things that happen. You know, you get your you you kind of stub your toe in the morning. You burn your toast. You you know, of a flat tire and you're like, things can escalate, right? Like people sometimes feel like, what the hell? It's one negative thing after another, right? You know, and then equally something good happens and then another something good happens, another something good happens. I think they would even like, sometimes people are so afraid of having too many positive things happen because they're almost like something negative is going to happen. Right. Like it's too good. Like people even we even say, right, it's too good to be true. It's too good to be. Tr What's too good to be true? That positive things are happening to me. They have to balance out. I mean, think about the shit that we tell ourselves. Right. You know, and no one is doing it to us. We're doing it to ourselves. I think like if I think one of the lessons I, I've like been teaching in bioenergy over the years like as a way of unraveling health and well-being and, and our, our participation in our spiritual journey. I think one of the things I've unraveled is that the energy and life is just a raw blank canvas. And we get to participate and we get to experience. And not like things will 
guide you along the way, but nothing is pushing and forcing you. If you want to be, if you want to be like miserable and unhappy, no one's going to stop you, right? Like the universe isn't going to fly down on, you know, on big clouds with, with big golden wings and say, hey, stop that negative thinking. You know, if you, if you ask the question, why does life suck? The universe is going to give you lots of answers. It's like a Google search. The universe is not going to say to you, don't, God, don't ask that question. That's a terrible question. You know, I can give you a lot of answers. You, you know, you don't, that's the wrong, don't be asking that. The universe doesn't argue with you. It just simply reflects your consciousness back to you. Your level of consciousness, your awareness of consciousness back to you, right? So in terms of like, in terms of the thinking process, the thought process, life is reflecting back to us our level of awareness, our level of consciousness. The way that we think is being reflected back to us through people, situations, circumstances. It's like a, it's being reflected back so that we might have the opportunity to see the way in which we create in the universe, that we're co-creation with the universe. And we co-create through our mind. That's how freaking powerful the mind is. That when we think, we imprint into the raw appearing energy of the universe that becomes the, the, the electrons that are vibrating as waves, the electrons that are vibrating as waves as we think, we imprint those waves, those that field of infinite possibility where the waves are just a potential to become something. And as we think, we take all of that potential and we collapse it and we start to direct it. And then without realizing it, we're directing the thought process is directing reality, is directing our life. Now, the reason I teach this is because I think, well, our mind is doing it anyway, right? It's not about stopping the mind from doing it. It's about directing the mind. So now you can, when you realize that life is carrying you forward, now you get to choose where you go. Boom. That's, that's the beauty. Life is carrying you along, but you get to choose where you go. You get to choose where you stop and visit, where you where. The, the, the scenic route, the fast route, you know, and we, we, we interact with that process in many ways by how we think, how we feel, how we breathe, and how we express our energy. And how we express our energy determines the vibrational frequency that we match up with, that we tune into, and then that gets reflected back into the universe to us, right? So I've often told a story of, of the girl that had, uh, she kept uh, saying that she keeps meeting creeps. And I, I think I just, I always tell the story because I think it's such a funny term. Like you don't hear people saying like, I met a creep, right? It's very like, it's such a, uh, I don't know. It's like, it's like, do people still use that language? Like I, this girl, I said, how many creeps have you met? And she's like, the last four people I dated were creeps, you know? And I said, well, what kind of person would you like to meet? And she says, I don't mind as long as he's not a creep. And it's like, if you understand the mind, if, if, you, if you're saying, I don't want to meet a creep, the imprint that you're putting into your mind is a creep and that's what you're going to meet, <laughs> right? So it's such an interesting, like, you know, even, even though people say, oh, Michael, I'm really positive. I keep telling myself not to have any back pain. I keep telling myself I'm going to lose weight. You know, I keep telling myself I'm not going to eat junk food anymore. I'm really positive. I've watched The Secret 36 times. You know, I'm really positive person, you know. And then a moment later, they're, they're like if you listen to their language and their language remember it's the spells that they're casting on themselves the way that we speak determines what we create next right and so a person will be like i'm i'm very positive like i'll be running a course and the person's like you know i'm super positive 
you know, but I hope I won't be late tomorrow. And it's like, why would you even bring that into the field? And it's like, well, because, um, well, the buses might be late on a Sunday. And it's like, why would you even bring that into the field? I'm just saying, I'm being positive. Right? I'm just saying I don't want to be late. And you say, well, how, how do you want to be? What is it that you want? You know, and they say, well, to be early. And the moment they say to be early, boom, they just imprinted everything in it. And I can literally step back and know that they'll be early for the course the next day. But the person that says, I hope I won't be late, I don't need to wait till tomorrow to see if they arrive late. I already know that that happens every single time. But if I can get them to change that imprint in their mind, but I can't tell them, I can't say you should arrive early. I got to say, what is your intent? What is it that you want? And they're like, to be early? And the moment they reach that place, then their mind has imprinted their consciousness. And that's the response. So the power of positive thinking comes, I believe, in our ability to respond to situations. So if something happens in your day, how do you respond to it, right? And it doesn't matter how you've responded for the last 20 years. I know, I know you think it does. I know you think it's like, yeah, but you mentioned habits and I have a habit of thinking certain ways and I don't even know how I'm thinking. I'm thinking unconsciously. So I'm thinking the same way for 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 years. It's very, very hard to change, right? And, and that's, you know, there's, there's a thought process there, right? Like it's really hard to change my thinking. And because you're thinking it's really hard to change your thinking, you're right. <laughs> because you're always right. Mm, think about that one. I am always right, <laughs> right? So if you're thinking something is hard to change, it's really hard to change. Now, does that mean if, if you're thinking something is easy to change, it's easy to change? Yes, <laughs> it does. Not all the time, but sometimes. And what, what I mean by that is that you're thinking like how you express your, your language, your thoughts is always coming from this moment. Even though the memory, even though we're in the habit of speaking from the past, you can only express yourself in this moment. Just like you can only breathe in this moment. You can't breathe from the past. You can only breathe from right now, right? So when we're speaking, your body is listening to you, not from the past not from your habits. Your body is listening to you always from right now. Oh, that's golden right there if you get that. And when, when, you know, when I'm helping someone turn their health around who's been sick for 20 or 30 years, when they get that, it's like, wow, holy shit. Because they're thinking like, Michael, I've been sick for so long. It's so hard to turn my health around. And when they realize your health is not based on your past, it's based on what's happening from this moment forward, right? Your health is based on what's happening from this moment forward, right? And so... How are you thinking in the now? And so how are you responding from that now? So one of the ways, like as an example, and th this is just an idea for you, one of the ways that I, I like to flip reality, meaning that I like to change my patterns or how something happens, is if something happens in your day, right? Would you like a golden nugget of how to flip it around? Yes? No? Maybe? Yes? Absolutely? Awesome. So something happens in your day, and we'll just say you consider it to be a negative event or something negative that happens. The power of questions, right? The absolute power of casting spells and creation with your words. 
if something negative happens and you say, why me? You're fucked. <laughs> Sorry for the language. But you're, you're like, you're really messing with yourself when you go down that road of why me? Because like I said, your the universe will give, it doesn't argue with you. It'll give you lots of reasons why shit happens to you, you know? So the process of the universe is, is that it's simply reflecting your consciousness back to you. How you communicate, it reflects it back to you and answers. So what if we were to flip our questions? Instead of saying, why does this always happen to me? Why is this happening again? Why do, never, why do things never work out for me? You know, instead of why am I always meeting creeps? <laughs> why, why am I always in debt? Instead of all of these questions of like, you know, why are these negative things happening? A beautiful question that I ask, are you ready for it? Yeah, is, I've forgotten it now, uh, just kidding, is what is good about this situation? What is good about this situation? It, see, it seems so obvious right? What's good about this situation? And it's just a question that you can ask yourself, like in response to things that happen during your day. And what you do is you start to train your mind to think in a positive way. You start to shift your mind over to positive thinking. And the reason you do is when you say what's good about this situation, the universe doesn't argue with you. The universe doesn't argue with you. The universe will find what's good about that situation and reflect it back to you. You know, right? So when you say what's good about this situation, it's like a Google search. But instead of doing a Google search, you're doing it in your own mind. And when you say what's good about this situation, your mind will extract out of the field of infinite possibility what is good about this situation. So even with illness, even with sickness, even with bad relationships, even with finances, even with jobs, all kinds of stuff, when, when you have stuff happening in your life that you're not happy with, that you don't want, that, you're, that, is, that is unhealthy, whatever it might be, instead of fighting with it, arguing it, rejecting it, when you say, what's good about this situation? This is the power of positive thinking to flip something around and to extract from that situation something of value. And as your mind learns to extract value, see, you, you know choice over what's happening, right? Like, so in fairness, some days you're going to have good stuff happen. And some days you're going to have bad stuff happen. And other days you're going to have more good stuff happen. And other days you're going to have more bad stuff happen. And you can say, well, what determines whether stuff is good or bad? That's, that's the only real question. Not that good and bad don't happen, but just simply what determines, you know. There's the old, there's this old like uh, parable of this, uh, this farmer who had, a, who had a son and a donkey. And the donkey, um, the donkey kind of... Uh, escapes out through the fence and disappears and the neighbors are like oh that's bad luck and the farmer is like oh, good luck bad luck who knows and then the the donkey comes back a few days later and it has a beautiful like a beautiful white stallion with the donkey and the neighbors are like oh wow good luck this is good luck and the the um the farmer's like good luck bad luck who knows and the son is riding this beautiful stallion and then falls off the stallion and breaks his leg. And uh, the neighbors are like, bad luck. <laughs> and the farmer's like, good luck, bad luck, who knows? And then the, um, the military come into the town and they're recruiting for the army and they take all of the sons um, for the army, but they don't take his son because he's got his leg broken, you know? And the story goes on and on basically but the the point being is that life is just life is a happening life is a happening right whether it's 
just like the weather is just the weather. The weather doesn't really care whether you think it's good or bad. It's just the weather. Life is just a happening. You don't have to do anything to make life happen. If you do nothing, life will still happen, right? You don't do anything to make your eyes like, you're not adjusting the cones and the retina to make your eyes look out at stuff, right? Like it's, it's a happening. So much of life is just a happening, right? So in terms of life just like happening, then we make, we make these associations, whether they're negative or whether they're positive, we add, we add like uh, a narrative to the things that happens in our life. Right now, I I really like the the philosophy of like, well, what if we don't add the narrative? What if it's not good luck or bad luck? You know, and and there there's no narrative that you add. That's that's another whole level of unraveling all of this. But before like before, I think you even get to that place where you're actually able to disassociate from from um the good and the bad, like from that duality, before you can disassociate it from that duality and find like peace in this moment all the time, that's, that's a level of attainment that you can, you can progress to. But before you get to that place, I think one of the, one of the, one of the ways that I've helped people and train people is you've got to get charged in charge of, of your thinking. Before you can have no thinking, you got to have the right thinking, right? You got to get or get your mind organized. So when the stuff happens in your day, you start to switch it into positive thinking. What is good about this situation? And you start extracting out of your day all the good stuff that happens. And one of the one of the benefits of that is it raises your vibration. You know, for the for the last. 30 years, like I've been teaching in, in through multiple training course, multiple programs, multiple like ways that I brought this information to people. And if I can sum up like one of the most beneficial things that you can do to raise your energy, it's gratitude and appreciation. Gratitude and appreciation. What is good about this situation? Do you have any idea how powerful that statement is? Because even in a negative situation, something that, you know, you can literally say, this is negative, this is unfortunate, you can find good in it. And in, in finding good in it, it can uplift you out of that darkness. It can uplift you out of, out of the depths of despair, out of the depths of suffering and sadness. And it can raise you. You can raise yourself out of your own depths of suffering, of sadness, of grief. I mean, grief is such a, a, a strong emotion to draw us down into the, into the dooms of despair, right? So, you know, it, it's, it sounds dramatic, but, you know, no one is more dramatic than we are inside of ourselves, right? But the power of positive thinking to uplift us out of our own despair, to uplift us out of those, those dark places that we find ourselves in, to, to bring light into the darkness, to, to extract from the dark experiences that we have, to extract the good things. And, and like I say, sometimes things are so dark, it feels like... Um, it feels like we've been buried, <laughs> you know, we've been buried in a grave. But, you know, another way of another way of saying that is that you've been planted. You've been planted, you know, to get roots to grow. Right. So we get we get buried in the dark, not to, not to be not to be gotten rid of, but to form roots to grow and to expand up into the light. You know, and the deeper our roots, you know, the the more we expand into the light so i think in terms of like bringing it all together we've gone a little over the time now but uh don't worry no charge <laughs> i'll um but i'll see if i can kind of sum it up for us now as, as we come into the 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 
the closing, uh, the closing stages, the last hurdle, the, the finals. It's, it's not just about positive thinking, like positive thinking. I, I think in, in some ways, like, you know, people, people can give positive thinking a bad name. Like even, even positive thinking can have a bad name. You know, people can say, oh, that person's too positive, right? You, and, and there's truth to that, right? There's absolute, you can have someone who's a comedian, who's like so funny and so like they're hilarious and they're funny and then they commit suicide. You know, Robin Williams was an example of that, right? The most beautiful man The like, I, I don't know anyone that didn't love Rob, Robin Williams. Like, you know, a beautiful man, right? Like absolutely, he gave so much to people, so much like in, in his career but obviously he was suffering inside, right? Like he suffered a lot inside. And so th there's a truth about like, oh, it's not just about being happy and it's not just about being positive. Folks, we are all of the things. We're all of the things. We're, we're good, we're bad, we're right, we're wrong, we're up, we're down, we're in, we're out. We are creation, we are destruction. We are health, we're sickness. We're good and we're bad. We're left, we're right, we're, we're up, we're down, we're in, we're out. We're all of the things. Absolutely, we are everything, right? And this, this unravelment of discovering that we are everything is a process of like peeling away an onion, discovering who and what we are. And absolutely, intellectually, we know that we're all of those things. And yet, as we live our life and we, we, we go into our experiences, we discover more and more how everything is connected, how we're all part of the same collective consciousness, how everything exists inside of consciousness. It's not that we have consciousness in, in us. We exist inside of consciousness. And the power of the mind, that the mind itself is the X factor, that you're thinking makes it so your thinking makes it so that's how powerful the mind is and so i just offer this as a i offer this as an idea as a as an opportunity as a concept that you're going to be thinking anyway right you're thinking anyway you're spending a lot of energy and time thinking stop trying to stop thinking like don't don't beat yourself up trying to stop thinking Right. You're, you know, people have tried for years to stop thinking. Right. You can achieve not thinking, but you never achieve not thinking by trying not to not think. Right. It, it just doesn't happen that way. But my point being, you're going to be thinking. That's what your mind does. Your mind thinks. But what you can do is you can raise the vibration of your thoughts. And you can contribute to a higher vibrational collective consciousness by choosing how you respond to the stuff that happens, not far off in the world, you know, but right here in your day, today, right now. How do you respond to the things in your life? And how are you responding to them now, right? That's where your power is. And as you start to appreciate and give thanks to the things that happen in your day as you start to acknowledge the good things out of everything that's happening as you keep focusing on the good things the things that you appreciate the things that you notice that are contributing to a better life for you as you start to notice them and appreciate and value them you raise your energy your frequency and your vibration and as you raise your energy frequency and vibration you're imprinting your body with good physical health and well-being. Now, when you've been sick for years and years, you still need to do the work. To, you still need to do the healing to get the trauma out of there. You still need to do the work to release the patterns and the conditioning and the programming, right? It's, you know, I, th I think it's healing is something we earn. You've got to put the work in to be healthy. Right, you got to put the work in to be healthy. It's something that you earn. If if you do nothing, you get nothing. Let that be a lesson in life. 
do nothing, get nothing. <laughs> but it's like, but it doesn't mean you can't get healthy, you can't get well, you can't change your thought process. Of course you can, you just have to make some effort. You have to think in a different way and approach things in a different way than what you've been doing, right? And so that for me is like, I come back to some of the things that I said in the beginning to finish off is that when people are happy, you tend to naturally boost your immune system. So when you're happy, your immune system is boosted, right? When, when people like, when people are fearful of getting sick, they hear someone cough and then they start getting protected. You're literally lowering your energy frequency and vibration. There is no protection from you when you're in a negative, when you're in a negative vibration, there's no protection from you. And that's why when people say, Michael, how do I get rid of negative people? You don't. There is no protection from you when you're in that place. It is you. And you got to go in to get out. You got to go inwards to break free, to get out of yourself. You got to go into your conditioning and programming and wounding and trauma. You got to go into your past in order to heal, to be able to be in the present moment, in order to be able to live and fully embrace the magic and the wonder that life has for us. In order to live in peace, we have to release the things that are that are taking us out of that peace. Yeah. And that's the power of healing, folks. And it begins with your mind. And if you want to explore that deeper, you know, we have our uh, level two practitioner training course coming up in May. It's on uh, eight, 18 classes live on Zoom from on Wednesdays from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. And uh, it runs for 18 classes, um, kind of weekly and then bi-weekly from, from May to uh, November. And one of, one of the things about that is that, you know, we, we can talk about positive thinking and we can talk about taking charge of your energy, but it's like there, there's this big pull for us to keep going back into our old patterns. And sometimes we need help. We need help. We need love. We need support to keep helping us hold and manage our energy in a new vibration long enough for it to take hold, long enough for the new patterns to take hold. And I think, I think one of the things with this is that when you're around people and with people and doing classes and courses with people that speak in a certain way, that vibrate in a certain way, that you start to match those vibrational frequencies and you start to speak in those ways and you start to match those frequencies. And before you know it, you're starting to choose your response. You're starting to realize that you have a choice that before you didn't even know that you had a choice. You're just in this unconscious way of living. And then as you start to wake up from that, you realize that you're bringing consciousness, light into the areas of your life where it was dark. And where it was dark, it was unconscious. And so sometimes people don't know what they don't know because it's dark in those places. You know, and so we're destined to keep repeating the past because we don't, we can't see those places until the light is put on it. And so, you know, just that's on offer at least. Uh, please check out my courses. I'll just post a link here in the group. Boom. Um, and then you'll see, and if you click on that link, it'll bring you to Linktree. And under the link tree, if you're watching this on YouTube later, you can go down to the to the description. You'll see a link for um, link tree. If you click on that, it shows you all the offerings, whether it's sessions, whether it's courses, things that I offer. I have um, a healing evening coming up soon in April. I do uh, bioenergy treatments either in person or through Zoom. Um, I've got a level one coming up in May, a level two bioenergy coming up in May. Level two is our International Practitioner Diploma Training Course. And that is pretty phenomenal. And um, it's like when we talk about like, how do we, how do we really take charge of the mind? It, it, it takes practice, right? You got to put the work in, you got to earn it, but you can do it. 
absolutely every single person can do it because we're all made up of the same stuff. And that stuff, my friends, is stardust. We're fucking magical, infinite magical spiritual beings, unbelievably powerful, magical spiritual beings. I'm going to stop recording, but thank you for tuning in today. Check out the link tree in my uh, subscription. And if you want to like, subscribe or uh, give a comment, thank you. I really appreciate that.